Well, hello and welcome to our webinar for this afternoon. My name is Brian Verbort. And the topics we'll be covering is expanded vault for non-CAD users and the ability to enable web browser access. We'll give uh, it just another minute and we'll get started. All right, great. Well, thank you all for attending. Um, my name Again, my name is Brian Verbort with M2 Technologies. I'm a solutions engineer at M2, and uh, I'm going to be covering some of the capabilities that you can extend to enable connectivity to your vault in a number of different ways, both with a, by browser access and using uh, what's called Vault Office. First, a uh, little bit about M2 Technologies. Been in business for about 25 years, um, several locations around the US, and we are a Microdesk partner. We are a uh, services de uh, delivery business, and uh, as such, we have partnerships with many other organizations and uh, companies that represent many, many different various products to help support industry. So BIM, man BIM for manufacturing, asset management, process doc optimization, you can see the things that are listed here. Um, we are a services business. We're also a Autodesk reseller, and we have a close relationship with them. Um, we're a gold partner. We also have partnerships with Panzera for uh, replicating data across slow um, extranets, and Eagle Point Pinnacle for training, Bluebeam, Panzera, uh, repeating myself there, and again, Autodesk. You can see the list of significant services that we offer. Um, in addition to being Autodesk resellers, we're uh, pretty heavily involved in a lot of our customers' organizations and their processes, uh, their infrastructure, as well as uh, the challenges they face in delivering training to get their, uh, their uh, users up to speed. Our agenda for the day is going to be uh, an overview of uh, the products and capabilities that we were, uh, we'll be discussing, Vault Office, and then the Vault Thin Client as well. Following that overview, we'll go into a little more detail and a brief uh, presentation, a uh, hands-on demonstration of the products in use. So you can see um, what it is we'll be talking about here in the next few minutes live in action near the end of the presentation. We'll also open things up to a, a Q&A period. If you have any questions, uh, please just feel free to enter those into uh, the questions panel in your uh, GoToWebinar interface. The session's being recorded so that if you have to break away early for some reason or want to share the information that I'm presenting here today with others, um, the presentation is uh, the recording of the presentation will be provided um, shortly after the presentation itself it usually takes a little bit of time to get those produced and then up to our website so just to kind of give a brief positioning statement here about uh, you know the problem we're trying to solve and uh, where it exists in the organizations you're probably all too familiar with uh, with some of the scenarios that I'll be painting today um, so traditionally, Engineers are kind of the core beneficiaries uh, from the implementation of a product data management system. Um, that's kind of the source of all the information that gets created as in the engineering department. And they actually, you know, need to store and manage that data uh, and the vast amount of it that's typically produced for different products and design efforts that are being made internally. A lot of that information, however, uh, could be very useful to people throughout the organization. But, you know, there's a fine line between giving access to people um, and then also oversharing and ending up with information that's maybe released into the wild prior to it being really ready for consumption. So in that, in many cases, you end up with silos or boundaries between the different departments that really could benefit from getting access to this information. The whole idea here is that the Vault Office can help us include people in the teams that are outside of engineering. 
and by providing ways that they can review and mark up designs, participate in some standard engineering processes and procedures internally, and using the data management capabilities to manage their own files that aren't necessarily CAD data files. Before we get too deep into the details of the product and its capabilities, um, just wanted to illustrate uh, with a bit of a chart here. Um, this is a some industry information that kind of uh, makes real and quantifies the these challenges that we're talking about with the siloed information and the lack of sharing uh, many times out of a concern, a very real concern of uh, uh, of sharing information that's not adequate or prepared uh, for consumption yet. I'll take a look at some of the capabilities of the Vault Office cap uh, product. First, it provides a couple of different access options. The first is a web application. And we refer to that as the Vault Thin client. Uh, what's nice about this is that it really requires no software at all in, in order to get access to the files. You just open up a web browser and you go to a link that gets configured for your Vault for access and you log in. And once you're logged in, you can search and view and even mark up designs. And you can see all the property information for the design and check files in or out of the vault. The second option is an actual desktop application. It provides all of the same capabilities that we just spoke about. Plus, it gives the ability to you know, assign lifecycle states to a process. Um, for files and items. Uh, the assumption here is that you know, the information we're sharing today, uh, it's positioned for people that probably already have a vault uh, installed and configured and working and kind of is being used by their engineering team. But we're trying to expend, extend this. Um, and certainly this information is helpful too, so that if, even if you don't have a vault up and running, you can see what the vault's capabilities are, even beyond just a general implementation. Um, and the way that Vault Office extends that information to other uh, parts of the team. So really our focus here is almost to speak to not so much the engineers, they already see a value in using a, a tool like Vault to manage their data and may have already adopted it, but really extending that. Uh, the tool already exists there. There's no reason that we can't grant access to it in a secure way and remove some of that over the wall siloing that happens in our business processes. So regardless of whether you're a CAD user, um, searching for the right file is usually kind of frustrating and can take a lot of time to find exactly what you what you need. Um, the both the thick and the thin client, or the the, the desktop and the thin client, uh, have the same searching capabilities. So regardless of which method you use to access your vault, you can run a quick basic search that will look through all the file properties that are stored in the vault in its entirety, or you can run a more advanced search and manually specify values for each uh, property that you are aware of and, and know that you need to find the, the related documents for. You can also use multiple search criteria with the, using Boolean operations to narrow down the list of files. So if you do a basic search and get way too much information returned, then you just start approaching it for, we're using the the laser-like precision of adding additional properties that you need to qualify for in your searching capabilities. Well, another common issue that um, can cause a lot of uh, frustration and wasted time is not being able to view and provide feedback on designs because people just don't have the application that was used to create the information. So, uh, you know, it's not uncommon for you know, a CAD user to have access to that CAD tool, but you know, somebody in purchasing or in a management role certainly wouldn't likely have that application installed on their computer or nor have the, the uh, desire or necessity to learn how to use it. So one of the things that uh, these, the Vault offers is that models can be provided in a lightweight format that can be opened by anyone that, that 
they don't need a CAD file or a CAD application on their desktop. This also helps in the, in the design review process. We'll talk more about that later and certainly uh, marking up and participating in that it can be very helpful. The more the merrier usually uh, in those scenarios and cases. When doing markups, uh, files can be managed inside of the vault and those markups can be attached directly to the design elements themselves so that everything gets tied together and visibility is uh, is it's very discoverable uh, when you see relationships between documents, a markup attached to a, a document, a CAD design. I mean, you know that markup is probably related to that design in some shape or form. So using a Vault Office desktop application, you can also participate in the release and change order process. So you can modify lifecycle states for both files and items in the same way that you do in the current Vault professional environment. And there's a viewer built right into Vault, so you can review the 3D models or the 2D drawings directly inside the application. And again, you don't need a piece of software or CAD tool in order to accomplish that. You can also, um, with correct permissions assigned, initiate a change order and participate as reviewers or approvers in that release process of maybe a new design or uh, participate in the revision of an existing design. Those markups and the access to participate in that process are critical. It's not uncommon for an engineering manager to not be hands-on active with a CAD tool, but doing more of a managerial function and participating in these processes and procedures. Um, they don't need to have a, a, a full-blown CAD tool installed in order to participate. Other options with the desktop application is you can run standard or custom reports, which is super helpful so that you can see real-time information on the files, the projects and sub-projects, the items, the change orders open against a, a design. The dashboard report can also be used to view uh, the current lifecycle state and uh, designer activity so that you can get a visibility on where that project is currently. And the design files that are generated against it. And just a quick, easy to create report exposes that information to someone that might find it very useful managing uh, a, a project, a project manager uh, that uh, is in process without having to walk around and bother people and uh, call uh, 500 phone numbers to get a, a sense of where their project is. Permissions are a key component here. We don't want to extend the information until it's ready to be viewed. And we don't want to extend information at all to people that don't really need it. It's not necessary to extend to. So permissions and security become a critical component of, of the extending of this data, the exposing of the data to the rest of the organizations. So it's a, it makes this whole process is, is easy. You can set up access permissions for users or groups. Um, you can use project folders and set permissions at the folders, uh, all the way down to individual files. And you can also set up permissions for who can modify um, different aspects of the design, a lifecycle state or change a file or change a uh, limit the access based upon you know a current a life cycle or move. A, a design from a work in progress to a released state. So you only, things like an example would be the shop floor. Uh, you only want the shop floor or even the sales team to have access to files that are in a released state. And that's just certainly very uh, very achievable with the, just a, a permissions configuration that accommodates those users, gives them what they need and no more. And there's also, an, the uh, I almost forgot to mention, there's also the capability to set and manage those user permissions using Active Directory. Custom objects can be powerful as well. Um, and it, a lot of companies use these to manage uh, project information that isn't stored easily in a file. So an example there would be a supplier lists, a designer project tasks. Uh, the uh, project team contact information for you know your other team members who I call if I have a question, uh, virtually any other process that might be unique to your business. 
these custom objects are displayed inside the vault and you can see them in or via vault office. You can manage them with the same category, life cycles and schemes, and uh, you can use the same transition rules and capabilities. Uh, they're also available uh, for these design files via the vault office application. In addition, the actual design files like 3D models and drawings, um, a lot of product documentation is created and they're typically unmanaged. Things like imagery and quotes, specifications, maintenance reports and operating manuals, field service reports, bulletins, it goes on and on. Uh, this stuff can all be managed inside Vault. So you've got a single repository for all of your relevant data and you have the same capabilities to apply revision and lifecycle controls on these types of information uh, for your organization. There's also a really deep integration or a direct integration with the Office products. So Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, all the documents presentations, spreadsheets, and even email communications that go along with the creation and management of a new product or the revision of an existing one can all be managed in Vault and associated with the relevant projects or the individual design files even. In addition, you can use the Vault data standard, which comes with Vault Professional, to ensure all of your documents meet company standards. This capability can be used to specify conventions and templates, file naming conventions for your organization and the document types you're working with. There's also uh, the ability to assign automatically and populate fields for these, pro for these particular aspects of your design in properties that are entered into the form that uh, the Vault Data Standard provides to us. So in speaking with the uh, the Vault, Vault Office and mentioning the Vault Data Standard, um, you've, you can see a lot of the capabilities that the Vault Office and how they could help alleviate many of the challenges that you know we are seeing in an organization that's in motion. Before we kind of wrap this discussion up, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with a, a live demonstration of just some of the aspects and showing you what the tool looks like and how it's similar and dissimilar. Uh, to what you might already have in place and already be familiar with with uh, the vault environment managing your engineering data. Let me switch screens here to accomplish that. So here you should see the vault application I've just launched for vault office. You'll see here I'm using vault office 2021 and this is the login screen that you typically would get um, when connecting to a vault environment. You enter your credentials in uh, and the vault that you're trying to connect to and then you're presented with a view of the vault that um, matches the permissions and capabilities that you have allowed or assigned to you. So it's interesting to know um, it looks a lot like just the vault environment doesn't it? There's not a lot of differences here uh, at first blush, you see the, the properties panel, you see the uh, work list and the CAD data storage uh, hierarchy of folders on the left in this case, um, contents of the vault here shown in the upper frame and the ability to see the previews down below. So this is all standard Autodesk vault um, capabilities and technology. Uh, I am in vault office, however, so one some of the things that are different is things like the ability to do administration. So if I go to tools and were to try to administer something regarding or uh, how the vault itself um, works, uh, behavior, uh, creating life cycle states and uh, some of those administrative tasks that not everyone should be doing, you'll notice that I do not, in fact, I don't have the ability to do those things. And, if I wanted to uh, maybe right click and try to check in or check out or even get a local copy of documents, that's not available to me directly on the CAD files through this interface. We want to we want to keep 
or uh, that that information close to the vest in engineering uh, until we know that it's ready for prime time and the information can be shared with others. So we're held at arm's length on some of these capabilities as we should be if we don't require that level of diff. The last thing you want to do is have somebody that's unfamiliar with the product, uh, hasn't had training yet to go in and change the way that your vault works for your engineering team, the organization that might be there. So there are limitations. Um, some of the things we can do, however, depending on my capabilities, is I can do a state change. So with my vault office and the permissions, I'm granted access to go ahead and do some state, uh, some state changes. So if I was a manager or someone responsible for approving uh, a design, I can easily um, do that here using the previewing information down below. We'll go in more detail on that in a second. But also just move the, the documents through the release process. Things that I can't move, I won't be able to. So if I don't have the correct permissions for a document or I don't have permissions to move a document um, from a life cycle state of work in progress to released, it just simply won't happen. Again, I'll spend a little more time down here in the preview window because that's also a fairly uh, significant key in uh, making sure that our documentation is understood clearly by people outside the organization. So with Vault Office, I get the same capability that an engineer has uh, when parsing through the vault to find things of interest and of importance to me. So I can simply select something and take a closer look at it in this Vault Preview window. You can see I can pan and zoom, I could determine you know, the current revision level, the description information. I can also look at the bill of materials that comes along with, um, you know, the use of a, a tool like Inventor that has a, the bill of materials management and creation environment in it. So these are the types of things that we're capable of doing with Vault Office. I don't have the Vault Vic Clan installed on this computer. It's simply not there. So everything you can see that I'm doing here is done, I'm accomplishing with the Vault Office product itself. The next uh, glimpse into uh, the outside world, so to speak, when it comes with regard to getting access to our vaulted environments is access via the web client. So using a web browser to access information in our vault. So um, it makes sense for us to kind of transition then from showing the in vault view that we're looking at here to an external view into the vault coming from outside and through a web browser. So I'll simply minimize this, continue my screen sharing here, and I'll open up another application that I'll use to get into so I've already got a uh, uh, the vault configured to to open up access to the outside world so that's the URL that I would be using to access my vault and it's totally configurable. Um, notice I'm doing this from within Internet Explorer. So in the process of, of connecting myself to this view or the access up to the vault, of course you would anticipate and expect that we have the ability now to use the um, credentials and security and along with it the roles that are assigned to my account. So I'll be authenticated into the vault and restricted with my credentials to only access things that uh, uh, we want to be able to see from the, to display to the outside world frequently. This access is going to be restricted to showing or displaying only released documents. 
So much like the folder structure, you know, the hierarchy in our vault environment that we saw previously on that left panel, uh, we have the same structure that's built out here. But you'll notice I'm using a web browser to accomplish this. And I have the ability here to just simply either drill down into or search using the same search capabilities that we have in uh, the, the vault environment itself within the what's normally a, a CAD design tool. I can search this through my web browser and find particular documents by putting in criteria here. One of the beautiful things about this is that you will notice that as I'm going through here and either browsing or doing searching to find my way, um, it's only showing me released documents. So there were many, many other documents associated with this design. They weren't released. You saw me release some of them, and that's why they're shown here. That's why they're displayed. They wouldn't be shown here if they weren't in a released state. Notice that this gives us revision information as well. So when we're taking a look at some of these documents, we can drill down in on them and determine whether, okay, well, I'd rather see the maybe the 3D model as this as opposed to the 2D drawing. But we do have access. We've got a little, looks like I got a connection problem here. Hopefully that won't be continuing. So in this case, I'll have, um, well, let me just say, I don't want to see the drawing necessarily. I, I Maybe I want to see that something's related to it. So one of the components, right? So here's a part file. Notice I have a uses and a where used that allows me to browse through this information. So if I select a document, I can start seeing things like the, uh, the files themselves, the 3D modeling files. I can see the categories that are associated with them, the property information related to check-in and check-out, when it was released for production. All of these things are uh, absolutely readily available to me, and I can use them, them to my benefit here. So getting access to this information from the outside world is certainly very helpful. Um, and then the ability to view it, so I'll just click on another document here. Well, if we take another look at some of the other documents here, I'll just go directly to a part file. I guess I selected a drawing again. That's okay. There's no uses or where used here, so let me just select that. And there's a part file that's in a released state. So we'll just take a closer look at it. So I see a reasonably good preview there. I see, I see access to uses and where used information, but I can also do things like view the document. So um, if I wanted to preview it, I could use that. I could also download the file. And you'll notice here, as I do that, it's lightning fast. Uh, it's not because uh, my system's so quick, it's because we're really not looking at the, at the CAD model itself at all. This is the lightweight viewable that we're looking at. So I can choose to open this a number of different ways. Oh, and it's launching the, the part files. I do have Inventor installed on this machine, so it's opening it using Inventor. Uh, typically, we would want to use the TWIF file, so we would download and view the lightweight viewable in this case. So I'll go ahead and we'll save this document off. Might be very helpful for a machine shop um, guy that's writing G code to see this and have that G, that model of a released design available to him to bring into his CAD system and, and write G code. So there are lots of aspects and ways that we might want to access this information in addition to the DWF file 
um, it uh, again the, the only there's a limitation here right we wouldn't want to provide this capability to access that native part 3d model to just anyone uh, but different roles and responsibilities in the organization they can get different permissions and this is a very good uh, example of how that works and why that works so that's just a brief overview of um, the tools and the way that they work uh, and using the web client to use a web browser to access vault information as well as using vault office to extend the information into the rest of our organization so you can see that we've got very flexible access using different methods with different securities we got the ability in accessing those files to do to participate in the review um, redlining and markup uh, possibilities there process i should say uh, the reporting that comes with the access via the uh, vault office product for permissions and uh, helping process workflows for release and securities, et cetera. So an uh, engineering change order process, if you have it enabled in Vault, then you can just uh, bolt users right to it that are then are provers for those that uh, reviewing and approving process that you might currently be doing in a manual way, more of a paper-driven environment, more of a meeting-based, uh, can then certainly be um, uh, more adapted to a remote work environment, as well as just the efficiencies that comes with uh, notifications when you start to embrace that changing order process workflow. So just a recap of a uh, list of the capabilities that we have. Show the tie-in for some of the Office products. Let me go ahead and do that before we get too far away from things here. Um, I'll just use a Word document as an example here. Just launching Word and open just a blank document, although it could be a document that has um, obviously already in process with inf information data in it. And you'll see that up here on the ribbon, we have just some of the standard tool sets that are available here. Well, we've got a new tab called Autodesk Vault. And again, like anything else that accesses our Vault environment, credentials are required and roles associated with those credentials are enforced. So I'm authenticating myself in the vault directly from within, in this case, Word. A very common tool, obviously, to be used for those types of uh, processes and procedures, a lot of forms and typically Word-based, those types of things. So I can go ahead and I don't know, I'll just save this document off. And it's giving me a file name and a location. I can send it up to OneDrive if I want to, or I can go to other locations. So I can give it a number at this point. Other save options, saving as, etc. So when checking the document in, so let's say I had added something of value to this document. It makes sense for this file to be saved to disk first. And so that's exactly what we'll do. And then the location, I'll put it in a documents folder. You can see that I'm given context that's going to be placed in. So right now, this is the whole folder hierarchy for the, the designs that we were just looking at. And I can traverse that directory structure and add this document to right to the correct location for the project that we might be using here. So you can see it's uh, telling me what it's about to do. We can make a determination as to what to do with the working copies that are about to be placed in. So if I close and delete that, then the only document will exist. The, the, there will only be one copy of the document that exists, not the one on my desktop, but the one that's uh, being vaulted right now. I can add comments here. It's being saved to the location that I've defined it to be saved to. And it's now taking that document and opening it, saving it to the appropriate location. And then can be, it'll be open from the appropriate location as well. 
So if we come back into our vault environment here, and we go to our documents location, there it is. There's the document that we just uh, checked in. If I take a look at the preview on that document, you'll see it gives us version history. So I can see the entire list of versions or I can choose to open the document directly from that location once I've determined that's the one that I intended to um, either review or modify in some way, shape, or form. The other thing that we might want to do is to obviously uh, do some modification to the document in some way. So in saving that, you see that we're now getting a save as. Well, it's because I don't own the document. So in the vault environment here, the workflow is the same as it is for our engineers. And that would be to check the file out for editing. So checking in would save it, uh, result in a save as. Notice that the file is, a re is in a read-only state. And then simply doing a check out would give us ownership on it. If I wanted to you know, refresh the document, if I'd accidentally made some edits ahead of time and I didn't, uh, I didn't mean to, or I was editing the wrong document, that helps keep me uh, from making a mistake and writing back information that I didn't intend to write into. So from a user's perspective, you can kind of understand why it's called Vault Office. It has a real office-centric workflow, not just Office uh, from the Microsoft Office perspective, but also users in your office, in your organization, now have access uh, using this utility, this tool, to access information that's required and important for them. With that, I'll thank you for attending. Have a great day, and uh, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, want to have a, a larger discussion about how this can help uh, extend your workflow and uh, get some gain some pro productivity for you in your organization, securing data as well as sharing it all at the same time, uh, give us a call. Contact information is here. And again, thank you very much for your time and attention.